This is my 2006 Mustang GT, and most of you know about this car, so I don't want to waste this time saying facts that you guys already know. Very quickly, I will mention it has an F1A Pro Charger, a built bottom, and a T56 Magnum XL transmission. My shadow is prominently featured in all of these clips because I was filming at 6 a.m., and I apologize for that. But what I do want to say is I have a proposition for you flockers if you live in the SoCal area. I am looking to review special builds, nothing basic, okay? If you have a car that is modified and you think would be entertaining for me to review, not just, you know, an exhaust on your Infiniti or your Honda Civic, if you have a modified car that has balls or is weird or different or quirky in any weird way, go ahead and get in touch with me via Instagram or an email. Use the email on the screen, drewpeacock.reviews at gmail.com. List your car, the mods to your car, and your location. I'm only doing SoCal right now. Obviously, that's where I live. I'm not going to fly all over the country because this isn't what my whole channel is about. Maybe it'll turn into that, but as of right now, SoCal only, please. If you guys are interested in me doing something like this with your car, obviously I will shout you out if I do a video with you. So um, it would be very interesting to see what you guys have and my different reactions to your guys' cars in person, actually feeling your guys' cars rather than just seeing pictures of them. Now back to what I was saying before. Like I said, this is my Mustang GT. It has around 500 wheel horsepower. It's still on 91 octane. I am going on E85 soon. I have the parts ordered for you flock members that watch my videos. You guys know this already. Uh, the wrap was done by yours truly, so it has many flaws in it. No wrap is perfect, and especially when you do it yourself, that's just something you got to live with. The interior of my car has Corbo racing seats, a gutted interior. Everything else is pretty basic on the interior. Underneath the hood, we see the big ol' F one a pro charger along with a lot of dust because again i haven't been driving this car it's been sitting for the most part ever since i got my 200 sx there's no point in dailing a car that gets like 10 mpg so might as well take the little nissan for a spin so let's go ahead and waste some gas all right guys so i hope you guys can hear me this is probably going to be one of the loudest cars i review but we are in my Mustang GT and I'm gonna talk about it in two different ways. I'm gonna talk about it as a daily and I'm gonna talk about it as a fun little, you know, race car. So right off the bat, as a daily, it's not the best car. Obviously, it's very specific. This isn't for every Mustang GT out there. I, you know, if you go and modify your car, it kind of kills the dailyable factor of it. You can't daily drive a race car that gets five MPG. My car doesn't get five MPG, in fact, since I went with the, the F1A Pro Charger, it actually gets better MPG than it did with the saline blower. Uh, before, I used to get a combined 10 MPG, and now I'm getting a combined 12 or so. Let me, I could check right now. It's saying right now I'm, I'm getting an average of 13 MPG, which is pretty good. I mean, for a supercharged car that does almost 500 wheel horsepower, that ain't bad. I'm not complaining. We're on 91 octane. Uh, the, the whole reason why I wanted to keep it on 91 octane was because I liked the convenience of just like being able to drive the car and just drive around and not have to worry and plan out where you're going to get E85 like right there. Now, sadly, you know, 91 does have some limitations. You can't go and, you know, boost your car super crazy fast with 91 octane. There is a limit to it. There's a limit to how much boost you can actually throw at 91 octane. It's about 14 or 15 PSI. Multiple shops have told me that. Right now, I'm at 14 PSI, so I can't safely really go anymore. I mean, I'm not going to go and spend 100 more bucks to get maybe 30 more horsepower or 15 more horsepower. If I throw one more pound of boost at it, I'm not going to do that. So going E85 for the way I want to drive it and the, the power I want just makes sense for me. But driving it as a daily, once you start doing all these extra mods, you guys will soon realize if you're doing these to your daily that it's not the smartest idea and then you're going to need another daily and then the whole cycle continues. So as a daily, it's not the best car. It's a fun daily. You know, when I did daily this before I got the Nissan 200SX, it was fun. And don't mind this. Sorry, that's just airsoft stuff. But uh, no, it was a fun daily. I mean, uh, it's fun. It, it turns heads. It, I love the blow-off valve sound. Now, I do have the windows up and the AC on because it's SoCal in mid-July or end of July now. So it's hot as balls out. And uh, I don't want to sweat my balls off. But yeah, as a daily, not the best car. Suspension-wise, I, I feel like my car, or at least my front bumper, my front end is just too low. It tends to scrape a lot. Not on everything, I can get away with a lot of stuff, but it tends to scrape a lot. And you guys might be noticing that, hey, it's kind of bouncy in there. Well, it's because I have really stiff suspension. I have really stiff shocks and really stiff springs. I have to have stiff shocks so I don't scrape when I go over things. Didn't mean for that to rhyme. 
I'm running out of time. Got to keep the video going. I don't know the rest. All right, well. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, another factor that kind of adds into the whole not the best daily is the stiffness. Now, I don't really mind the stiffness. Some people might think it's annoying. Personally, it's not a big deal to me. Uh, yes, it does not feel like a fucking BMW in here. It does not feel like a McLaren. It does not feel like a Mercedes. It, it feels like a race car for the most part. It's stiff. You feel all the little bumps. Now, sometimes it hurts you because you feel the bump super hard and you feel like it's damaging your car, but it's not. But it does hurt because, you know, you'll go and you'll hit, especially in SoCal, the freeways here suck ass. So you go and hit a bump on the freeway. Yes, there's bumps on the freeway. Uh, it's usually over little bridge areas where they, it's uneven, but you go and hit this little fucking lip and you feel like you're about to do an ollie kickflip over <laughs> overneath the on the freeway gas mileage in this car kind of already talked about it it's not the worst 13 mpg that's a lot better than it was before but since i did move out of my parents house and uh since i am paying my own bills it's another thing that you just kind of want to cut down on if you're you know living your own life a lot of people say that mommy and daddy actually bought this car for me and that if you knew my parents that would be further from the truth they wanted nothing to do with this car they wanted nothing to do with me getting a v8 they didn't even want me to get a v8 and i saved up okay hard-earned money i worked at the dealership for a couple years i saved up my money and i bought the car i wanted uh there's more to the story but just a little quick thing no they did not buy this car from me i i get that comment a lot people just get butthurt because i say a joke about a car that they like and they're like whoa you're stupid you drive mommy and daddy's mustang no this is not mommy's and daddy's mustang this is my mustang their name is nowhere to be found on the title their name is not even in the equation they've never even driven the car <laughs> like they hate the car they hate me having the car because they think that i'm gonna kill myself with it which is a, it's a possibility but it wouldn't be intentional now appearance wise i do love how this car looks but i don't like how many s197s look i think the stock s197 is pretty damn ugly okay uh, it, i get it's the whole retro look and everything like that but i don't think it looks very good um it, you know the roush one looks good i think even the saline one looks pretty good just because it's a little different but the factory one i am not a fan of i'll see factory ones and it is hard to keep that factory front bumper and make it look pretty clean i think the front bumper is like just the worst part about it i don't know it just it's and the bumper is all around actually you know just just count all the bumpers they're too small and they're too high up i don't know it's just hard to make it look good there are some things you can do you can have a chin spoiler or a diffuser or a splitter you can do a few things but i think personally getting an aftermarket bumper or an aftermarket kit there are so many options for mustangs which is one of the reasons why i love mustangs but there are so many options out there that i think you should just scrap the front bumper right when you get the car unless you're going for some sleeper look but i love how my car looks um, i'm a fan of this kit i did not put this kit on this kit came with the car if i had the car would i put this kit on i don't know as of right now I, I love the hood i love the wrap i love my wheels i love my tire setup i love the appearance of this car it gives off a, to me it gives off a pretty aggressive appearance it's like a big fuck you appearance and i kind of like that and i don't like it because i'm a dick i just don't want to drive one of these boring commuter cars i want a car that i enjoy i want a car that i can drive every day and live a fun life and i feel like a lot of you guys are the same way so overall as a daily it works but it's not something that you would want a daily for long term and again this is very specific for my car it's not for every mustang gt out there it's just this car in general now as a race car this car is beautiful okay it can handle i know it's surprising it can handle okay i'm not saying it can handle you know quite as good as an r34 gtr but it can handle for a mustang i mean it's planted i've taken this on many canyon cruises and i'm on people's asses non-stop straight line performance i think is there now obviously there are people that are faster there's always going to be someone faster but straight line performance is there uh, i can keep up with a lot of cars it's an 06 and i think that's what shocks a lot of people is because they see me pull up to race meets and they're like oh an 06 a three valve 4.6 liter it's not going to be that fast and then i'm keeping up if not beating their 50s or their sss then it just completely shocks them they come up to me usually after and say yo what do you have done to that this is back when i had my saline blower since i've gotten this blower i haven't gone out to any race meets because i don't see a point of it yet since i'm not actually faster than i used to be before i don't see a point of it yet i'm about the same horsepower rating as i was with my saline so i've kind of raced 
about as much as I want to on that horsepower range. I want the next big thing. I want to get that horsepower. I want that more boost. So, but as a race car, it is a fun car. It is loud. It gives you all of the race car features uh, such as drone and loud exhaust and annoying your neighbors every time you turn it on. Um, it does have AC though, which I have on right now, thank God. But uh, I don't know, I might take that out in the future if I do keep my daily. Now, if I get a chance up ahead, I will do a pull. Most of you guys have seen me do a pull in this car. It's not, again, it's nothing super crazy. It's not a thousand horsepower car, but it is fun and I do love hearing the blow off valve. That is probably one of my favorite things about this car now. I don't care too much about the exhaust sound. The blow off valve alone just makes it worth it, in my opinion. your car I would recommend a centrifugal supercharger I think they are a lot more efficient and I think they they, they don't get as hot as much as a, a twin screw does twin screws they can get hot after a while and you know a centrifugal I've heard so much good things about them and by owning one I think they are a lot more fun in my opinion it feels more like a turbo but you also get that nice blow off valve sound and I think that alone is just worth it Compared to it being a daily, it as a race car just makes a whole lot more sense. Driving this as a daily, again, you're gonna get tired of it after a while. You can do it, but I mean, I've had the car for two years and wasting 50 bucks every couple days on gas is not so fun. No matter how much you might say, oh, that'd be fun, it's not that fun, okay? When it's actually coming out of your bank account every couple days, every three to four days, 50 bucks, it's, it sucks. So driving it as a, as a daily doesn't make as much sense as driving it as a race car. Taking it out, for some spirited driving, for having fun and getting your fun out of it, that makes a lot more sense. Of course, obviously it's set up to be a race car. It's got the supercharger, the gutted interior, built transmission, drag tires. I mean, it's set up to be a race car and uh, it just shines when you drive it as one. No, it's not the fastest car ever. We've already talked about this. No, it's not the best handling car ever. We've already talked about this. But as a race car, as what I like to do with it, it's fun. If you're in the SoCal area and you think your car is different enough or modded enough to be test driven and reviewed by me, um, I do have some cars lined up. I am reviewing a Supra this weekend, which will be pretty insane. But yeah, again, I'm not trying to review no basic ass, you know, Honda Civic with an exhaust and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. So just keep that in mind. But if your car is modified, if your car has balls, if your car is, you think is worth reviewing and you think people would be interested in it, then let me know. Shoot me a message on Instagram, comment on something so I can check it out. But let me know what it's about that way you don't bait me into something like looking at your basic honda civic uh, let me know subscribe to join the peacock flock and until next video peace